This podcast is a Uniting Heart and Soul production. Hello and welcome back to Filthy Hope, a podcast from Uniting Heart and Soul in Wallara, where we dive into the grey spaces where Jesus, life and culture intersect. I'm your host, John T. Cornford, Creative Director here at Uniting Heart and Soul, and joining me, of course, is the Reverend Vanessa williams Henke, Senior Pastor here at Uniting Heart and Soul. On this week's episode of the show, we're diving into the mailbag and responding to you. We had to record this one in our meeting room at Heart and Soul, which is why there might be a bit of noise in the background, so we do apologise for that. It's also a shorter one this week, but we'll be getting right back into it next week with some really exciting guests and a new series that I can't wait to dive into. Enjoy the episode. Yes, welcome to the podcast. How are hey, you? Hey, good, Jonty. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a shorter one today, just because of things outside of our control. We're knocking one out uh, in the meeting room at church, as opposed to our normal studio. So no video this week. No, but it feels holy here. It does. It feels um. It feels I'm not going to say any bad words. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Yeah. No, <laughs> I can't because I've got the choir in there singing, you know, yes. Jesus love songs. So if you hear. Music in the background, that's because there's, there's a choir rehearsing next yeah, door. To say fuck would just be um, not appropriate. To say what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, today what we're going to do is take the opportunity to uh, respond to some messages and some um, uh, emails and stuff that we've received. Brilliant. Um, one, the first one that I'd be curious for you to respond to is we received a comment mm. Um, about the Exorcist episode, which I haven't listened to. Go back and check it out. Mm. Um, saying something along the lines of, I should have got this up earlier. Um, Isn't it funny that only Christians become possessed? Mm. Um, thoughts, Ness? Oh, my thoughts are that's a lot of bullshit. <coughs> I think Christians uh, become aware of any uh, satanic overtones and possession, inverted commas, that's going on because they've got God inside of them and then obviously that demonic crap starts to rise up and want to quash down the the Holy Spirit inside of them. And, of course, if you're a Christian and you've got some demonic stuff from childhood um, through no fault of your own um, that's had a conduit into your being – you're going to have that stuff rise up when you start saying things like Jesus and and um, Holy Spirit and God the Father and start interacting with Christian people. It's going to want to rebuke that. So I think mm. that's a bit of BS. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Mm. And were you a Christian? No, I wasn't a Christian. When I, you know, I was a little child when I was sexually abused and I think I believe that's when the, the demonic stuff um, had a – conduit into my being and um, I didn't become a Christian until I was 25, mm. you know, and it was actually sometime after that that I recognised the demonic stuff inside of me. I had, I'd been a Christian for quite some time uh, until that started to really uh, rise up. Yeah. yeah. Then we dealt with it. Interesting. Got so rid of that little monster. Don't remember that dude's name, but um, no, it's not just Christians. <laughs> no. Um, even someone like like me who, and we talked about this last week, um, I'm more on the sceptical end of the scale. Mm. Um, just the idea that it only happens to people of 
faith. Um, and even talking about the ep- the the movie that we were talking about last week, the whole point of the movie is mm. that they're not people of faith, and that's why it's scary because it happens to them too. Yeah, um, I would imagine people of no faith would actually not be aware of any demonic stuff going on in them because they're not of any faith, <laughs> and so they're just leading a life that's have no faith. There's no God in their life whatsoever. I remember. Um, Packer died Mm. and I remember somebody interviewing him and saying, oh, uh, Kerry, did you see the light? Did you see the light when you died? He said, I didn't see any fucking light, no fucking light. And no, Kerry wouldn't have seen the light because to my knowledge, I don't think Kerry was of the faith at all. So, of course, he's not going to see any light of any sort. And, you know, the good thing about Kerry was he donated a whole lot of – defibrillators to the New South Wales Ambulance Department um, so that every ambo had a defibrillator after that experience because they saved his life, which Mm. is amazing. So you don't have to have the faith and still be a – you can be a good person. And so he did some amazing things with his cash. Yeah, Christians don't have a monopoly on being a good person. No. That's a a thing that I hear a lot of. Yeah. It's just garbage. But you can be a person in the world who has no faith and I believe have a whole lot of demonic shit going on, Mm. you know. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, next question from Claire. Hey, Claire. How Claire. you doing? Uh, why do you like the creamy lollipops better? Now, I'm, I'm assuming that that's directed to me because we haven't uh, – if we're talking about um, Chupa Chups, for yes. example. Oh, I do like them too. Yeah, so like I'm strawberries and cream oh, or the yes. um, chocolate, chocolate vanilla one. Yeah, and the choc banana one. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Great. Um, Claire, because they're better. There's it, just no other one that's better, Claire. Catch yeah. up, babe. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it, just, it does mean that there's more for me to eat because Claire doesn't eat the creamy ones. So. Yeah, stick your f- stick one in your gob and get it on and have a have a taste and you'll notice that they're the better ones. <laughs> oh, there's so many innuendos going on. This Not in my mind. I just had Choc Nana going on, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, short answer. They're just better. You're wrong, Claire. Yeah. Sorry. I'll see you at home. Um, anonymous, most powerful moment with God. What do you reckon, Ooh. Ness? Anything jump to mind? Oh, straight away. It was my firecracker up the ass moment. Mm. And it was actually my salvation moment. And I came into church that night and I didn't want to go. I came kicking and screaming and, oh, it was just um, amazing. I had this absolute, I would call it a, f- a, a battle of um, good and evil in a way. And I had... It got to the altar call of this church event and it was in the Pentecostal church and it was phenomenal, really slick performance, amazing music, pretty average preaching now that I think back, now that I am one. Yeah. You know, it's just light on. But anyway, um, must have been enough uh, because after that uh, the preacher did an altar call and up came the lights and the music and bow your head and and then at that point I – walked outside. I just got up out of my seat and walked outside. My sister came after me and she said to me, Ness, mate, it's the best part. We're going to grab a Gloria Jeans after this. Come on, come on, come and come back in. She knew it was an altar call. And so she sucked me back in. I came back in and I sat back down and he was still going, the dude. And every eye closed and every head bowed and there's one more person out there that needs to give their life to the Lord and I can't move on until that one person and I couldn't bow my head and I was so obnoxious and lacking in obedience I wasn't going to be told how to do anything don't tell me how to posture you turd and then all of a sudden I felt this pressure on my shoulders pushing me down in my seat up the back and then I felt what I now know to be the Holy Spirit put a firecracker up my ass and I exploded out of the seat at, in tears. And the next thing, I've got people rushing up the aisle to, up the aisle to um, escort me down the front. And in that night, I gave my life to Christ. I was 25 and I have never looked back. The greatest night of my life. How good's that? Pretty bloody good. Yeah. I don't think I can top that. I don't um, think many Christians would call a firecracker up their ass moment. They'd I know be, what you mean. You know, it was uh, just yeah. on. I was. It was just like off. Went off. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I, I. Whether or not it's the Holy Spirit or whatever, I've definitely felt those moments of whether it's like a 
nudge or a, or a elbow in the side to go and do something. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that I'm in ministry at the moment, I was never in a million years planning to go into ministry. I was going to go into publishing and be a writer and Sorry freelance journalist. And then I felt this nudge and it wouldn't go away. And what, five years later, here I am. So Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Sucked in. Yeah, no, but you can't ignore it. He gets to the happens. end. So, yeah. Uh, anonymous, Jonty, can you explain your obsession with horror films as a Christian? Oh. So we talked a little bit about this last week, and I think um, they've asked not to have their name shared, which I respect. Good question, um, though. I, and I know where this question is coming from. Um, I've had a number of discussions over the years with other Christians who think that watching horror movies is bad for you. It's, it's like bad for your soul, almost. Um, right. And my short answer to that is, like, do they understand that it's fiction? Mm. It's not real. It's made up. Mm. It's make-believe. Mm. Um, and I, this is the, the snarky, um, not very nice response, but, like, I really do think that if your faith is that weak that it can be shaken by a film or a book mm. or something, then that's, mm. not, that's nothing to do with the book or mm. the movie. Like, that's, that's to do with your relationship with Christ. Because um, at the end of the day, it's fiction. And people will say, like, we had a discussion about whether we should be allowed to watch um, horror films in the church building mm. as if it would evoke. Wow, spirits, evil spirits. spirits. And I'm sitting there going, are you, are you serious? Mm. It's fiction. It's not real. Someone wrote this film mm. and they got actors to perform it and they did it in front of a camera. It's not a real thing. Mm. Um, so would they have trouble even watching Outlander? Where she goes through the stones back in oh, time two hundred years. Well, that's the thing. It's like where like you draw the line. Mystical behavior. Exactly. It's like, like do you on. draw the line at Harry Potter because I know yes. that's a thing that parents back in the day wouldn't let their kids watch yeah, Harry Potter Christian, in the church. I remember the yeah. Christian debacle at just at the time. It was like they were up in awe about, in in arms about that. Yeah, your child's going to cross over. So oh. my, my short answer is well, it's fiction, so I don't see an issue with it. Um, if 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 it's not your thing, then no one's forcing you to watch it. Mm. Um, it's not a like no one, no one is forcing you to watch it. So if horror movies turn aren't for off. you, then just turn it off. That's yeah. fine. But prescribing that Christians shouldn't because they think it's bad for you. Well, if it's if it's going to be bad for you, don't watch it. That's fine. Correct. But don't prescribe what other people can and can't do. And in terms of the other stuff, I think I talked a little bit about it last week, so I won't repeat myself too much. But um, it's like heavy metal. You either like it or you don't. Yeah. It's not my job to bully everyone else into liking it. Yeah, um, that's right. It's an acquired taste. Yep. Um, here we go. Let's have a look at another one. Oh, big question. I might throw this to both of us. Mm-hmm. Where is the church going? Oh, that's a great question. We could do a whole episode on oh. where we think the church is going. Cause, uh, we could talk about our church. Yeah. Where well, we're we're going. Let's talk about our church real quick. Okay. Um, so I can talk from the mental health perspective. I've got this real passion about mental health and how, um, the Lord loves all of us. We're made in his divine image and um, he cares about our mental health. So I feel a strong passion to be able to sow into our community with uh, services that will actually provide support to people experiencing mental health. So as a part of what we do as the church, we provide the Wellness HQ facility, which the church fully funds. And we have our beautiful counsellor, Julie Ryan, who is a psychologist who the church pays for. And anybody who needs um, counselling services can come to us and book in for free sessions. And we are supporting members of the community in a really large way. It's amazing. So I think more broadly, if I'm going to answer that question, um, I struggle to see, and this might sound dire, um, but I actually think it's the opposite. I think it's exciting. Um, the The model of church on a Sunday morning or even a Sunday evening, I don't see lasting longer than another five or six years. Um, and to a lot of people, that's scary and sad. Um, but if I can share the the quote-unquote church setting that I get the most out of in terms of my growth and faith spiritually um, is a group of up to 20 young adults that meet and have dinner and chat on a weeknight, not in a church building. Um, And it's a bigger church community than a lot of other people that meet in a church building together. Um, You know, some, some would say that isn't church. That's people hanging out. Um, I would say if there's more than two people meeting in the name of Christ together at any one time, then that's church. Bring it on. Um, So, yeah, I, I honestly do think that that's 
kind of because you know I, I grew up in the church so I, I I'm strongly biased towards being okay with church stuff but mm-hmm. like what young adult wants to go to church ever mm. like a young adult in an old paradigm I think um, it need it definitely needs to shift and we need to look at how we're going to actually accommodate um, the idea of church for these for the next generations to come because it will look different it mm. probably won't be on a Sunday at 10 a.m or 9 a.m because uh, we compete with kids sport. And yeah. I know that that's a nightmare for young families because children want to play sport. You know, talk about resentment for your child if they say oh, and they can't play basketball because they have to go to church on Sunday morning. I mean, sing nineties Hillsong sing music. Hillsong like, music. Get out of Shout here. to the yeah. Lord. I mean, that's going to cause all sorts of upset. So I think it's about finding a different style and um, and certainly finding what works for you. And that's what we're certainly experimenting with at Uniting Heart and Soul. And so, for example, this podcast is a way of doing um, Christian community in a really radical and honest way by being able to reach people that may not intersect in a faith community of any sort and therefore have some, I don't know, Christian content where it hits the world. And that's what I want to do is talk about the things that nobody else talks about in church um, through the lens of Christian think. Yeah, because I think at its heart there is a cultural difference and a cultural barrier between what real life is like and what the people that run church think real life should be like. Mm. And so I really do feel strongly that for the church to to have any meaningful presence in young people's lives, Mm. it's not about the church dragging people into it on a Sunday morning. The church has to meet people where they are. Yeah. Um, And whether that's through something like this podcast or people meeting on a weeknight in their own spaces Mm. or whatever it looks like. um, Yeah. I I really don't see a future in dragging people into a church building on a Sunday. Mm. Um, To sing some songs. Yeah, which is scary for some people, but like change is good. Well, it's definitely scary for our older demographic because that's all they've known. Yeah. And for people that are in strong cultural, uh, have strong cultural ties as well, uh, that's what they know and what their families expect from Sunday. That's how they gather and then they um, meet in community and have meals together. And this is what they do. And they call it church, but it's really a family gathering, a wider family gathering. Um and that's beautiful. It's amazing. But it doesn't necessarily have necessarily have to happen on a Sunday. No. It does it? It can no. happen any day of the week. And it doesn't have to happen in a church. No, it can, it can happen, happen in someone's home. Right. It could happen in the park. It could happen yeah. in the pub. Yeah, like exactly. There are all different expressions of faith that yep. are valid and, and are beautiful. Yep. Um, we could kick home for ages, but I know you need to duck off. Mm. Um, but what's coming up? What's coming up? Well, we have lots of guests booked i'm so excited about this next phase yeah so the idea is between now and christmas we've got a couple of things coming up towards the end of the year which we will tell you about when we get closer to that but between now and then um, we are going to be talking to a bunch of guests about either artistry what those people are doing with their art with their work um or uh secondary uh type of person we'll be interviewing is people to talk about uh, how their faith intersects with their work yeah, faith it's in the workplace be so good we have some really I mm. really wish I could say who we're mm. getting on just yet but um, I have to keep tight lipped until those things are all locked in and um, yeah all, the, all those ducks are lined up in a row um, it's going to be a good sort of six weeks of pod yes I'm really excited um, mm. and we'll probably want to revisit the Exorcist at some point between now and the end of the year as well because I know there was I had a great time having that conversation um, I and we received a few messages from people saying that they really liked it as well so we'll, we'll dip back into that conversation because there's more to, to yeah, unpack there yeah and, and I've, I've got a um, a person that I'm pastorally caring for at the moment who has some demonic stuff going on for her and I'm watching real transformation through love kindness and grace and I'm hoping and praying that by the time we do that next pod on Exodus, I'll have a beautiful story to share. Yeah. That's my prayer. Hold me to that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, that just about does it. Um, bit of a shorter one this week, but we've figured 
better this than nothing. Share uh, some music though, Jonty. Yeah, some well, what music. we might do is um, here at Uniting Heart and Soul, we're planning on releasing um, a bunch of music that we put together for online church last year. And we're opening up those sessions and sort of remastering and polishing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so as a little treat, I thought we would premiere one of those pieces of music for you. Amazing. Um, that will be so generous. Uh, we'll be diving into some guests starting next week. Um, till then, I'm Jonty. I'm Ness. And this is Filthy Hope. See you later. I'm working on what will be the first official release from Uniting Heart and Soul Music as I speak. But for now, please enjoy my arrangement of Be Thou My Vision, performed by myself and Rachel Humphreys. We'll keep you up to date on all the details about new music as it comes out, right here on Filthy Hope. We'll see you next week. Themselves. But those voices have been.